Morning, just dropped the kids off at school. I'm now driving over to Paul to um, the Hyundai dealer and uh, the start of 24 hours with a Ionic. Right, so here it is. Um, before I get going, and obviously I'll talk you through it properly, I just want to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Leaf. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. I've, um, I'm in a Hyundai Ionic. Uh, my first impressions, and this is, I've just literally just driven straight off the forecourt. Um, first impressions are, it feels like a, a very nice car. In many respects, this feels a lot more modern than the Leaf. Uh, the Leaf, whilst I've never really noticed it before, because obviously it's my car, I drive it every day, uh, it's just starting to feel a little bit tired and dated now uh, in comparison. Uh, that's not to say this is ultra modern, but it just feels, uh, you know, it's a new car, of course it is, but it just feels a little bit more modern than the Leaf. Now this is the top of the range one, it's the Electric Premium SE. So they do, in the electric only model, they do two types, they do a Premium and a Premium SE. The other thing that's caught my eye right from the off is the uh, Regen braking in it. Now this works on flappy paddles on the steering wheel and it's got three levels. Um, in fact it's probably got four if you include off. So at the moment I've got no Regen on and it's just freewheeling. I've got my foot off the accelerator going downhill. It feels like uh, a car in a gear that is either too high for going down hills or you've got it in neutral. It just freewheels. The, if I push the paddle on the left it gives me regen level one now with nothing on you get no regen at all with level one as soon as I take my foot off the accelerator uh, I get a small amount of it shows me on a, a, a bar a small amount of charge going back into the battery um, it's showing me at the moment one bar now if I click it again level two if I now take my foot off I'm at 30 miles an hour take my foot off I'll get two bars so if I go back up to 30 miles an hour, click it to level three, take my foot off, I've got three bars. So obviously the faster you're going, and if you're going downhill, you'll get more. But um, the difference there from what felt like freewheeling with nothing on, right down to level three, which feels like I'm putting my foot on the brake. And uh, from what the salesman said, the rear um, brake lights will illuminate at that time. They've given it to me with 75% charge, which is no use to me. So I'm gonna go straight to a rapid, get it plugged in, get it up to 100%, and then I can zero the um, tripometer and uh, we can find out kind of or get a better idea through my driving and you'll see what sort of driving I do during the course of the day uh, you know really what I can expect from it personally right well first of all a bit of a change of camera angle for you you don't want to just be looking at my ugly mug the whole time so you can actually see what it looks like inside this car a little bit um, secondly that didn't quite work out as I hoped um, the rapid charger knocked itself off for some reason so um, I'm leaving the car park now I've got 74 miles of range it says uh, with 72% charge in the battery now I'm gonna head to Southampton which according to the sat nav in the car that I've set up is 32.1 miles away so uh, it's all dual carriageway and motorway driving uh, and um, well we'll just see I'm not gonna speed I'm not going to do anything out of the ordinary I'm just going to have a normal drive there um, to get my lunch and um, we'll see what the battery does but so far uh, I'm quite enjoying the drive in here the regen the level three which is obviously the the toughest regen if you like that um, that took a little bit of getting used to but I'm, I'm kind of feeling it now it's it's this one pedal driving all right it doesn't necessarily bring it to a stop it might do but I haven't experienced that yet certainly it seems the slower you get, the less harsh it is. A bit like the leaf, really, but um, it's more defined. Uh, now I've got used to it, I like it. Originally, I found it a little bit sort of snatchy and a bit difficult, but it's just about um, reading the road, seeing what's going on around you, and um, you know that I'm on a hill going up, so it almost came to a stop there. But um, yeah, I'm quite enjoying that, um, and I've found naturally just settling into. Um, normal drive mode so there's eco normal and sport normal seems to go suit just driving around the town um, and it's nice to have that sport for the extra extra bit of oomph okay, so that's interesting um, the steering wheel kind of took on a bit of a life of its own then um, I wasn't aware that this had any sort of driver assist as far as keeping in the lane was concerned 
I, it's got the, the beepers that warn you when you're getting towards the, um, the white lines. But the steering wheel definitely took over very slightly there. I'm not sure what that was all about. There's definitely some control it, it does itself here. I had no idea it had that. Uh, this road isn't the best one to test it on. The white lines are rubbish here and there's nothing to my near side. When I get on the motorway, I'm gonna give that a proper go. Um, if, if that's something that comes in this car as standard, then that we're kind of going towards where the new Leaf wants to be with its Pro Pilot. Uh, how much assistance this has got, I don't know, but um, well, hopefully we'll find out through the course of the day. Well, we're stuck in traffic now trying to get into Southampton, but I've done just over 30 miles. So we started on, was it 74% battery, and it was showing about um, 73 miles, something like that. Uh, obviously the guesser meter now has adjusted. Now, just for kind of make sure we get the stats right. Uh, today it's 15 degrees, the roads are dry. I have spent the whole journey here, so probably 28 of the 30 plus miles have been on dual carriageways and motorways. I have had the cruise control set at 70 mile an hour. So I think, you know, from an EV driving point of view, that is the most inefficient way of driving one of these cars. And um, using the adaptive cruise control, quite often I was coming up behind lorries, it was slowing down, so I was moving out as we were going uphill. So obviously it was using a lot, lot more power. So we are now, I don't know if you can see the screen, 57% battery and 57 miles. So from my point of view, even on an inefficient drive, this will do one mile per 1%, which is far better than the 24 kilowatt hour leaf that I've got at the moment. Um, so the salesman's um, suggestion that it would do 120 real world miles, I think is probably spot on. And um, absolutely, if you drive it carefully around the town, really efficiently, there's no reason why you couldn't be pushing towards 150. I'm absolutely sure of it. So for me, that's, that's really positive. Now I think it's a 20, is it 28 kilowatt hour battery in here? Um, the drag coefficient of this car is something like 0.24. When you compare that to the current Leaf, which I think is 0.29, uh, obviously that shows that it's a, a little bit better battery from the 24 kilowatt hour one, uh, but you are getting substantially more range from it. So, um, the and that also translates into the, the noise in the cabin. On the motorway, it was, um, it was minimal. It was very nice, very relaxing, and that was really helped by all this adaptive cruise control. It was such a nice drive. I have to say the cruise control is really, really good in this. Uh, it, you know, I barely had to have any inputs at all. Um, I didn't have to touch the pedals at any point uh, and as far as steering was concerned it was a nudge every so often just to let the car know I was still here and still awake. I didn't have any of the heaters turned on um, although it feels quite warm the sun's out behind the glass what I have done is had the um, air conditioned seat on which uh, I've never had before and it's um it's very interesting <laughs> but uh, it, it seems to work it's really nice it's kept me nice and cool um, it's uh, a pleasant experience uh, and um, you know that's obviously going to be more efficient than having all the aircon running in the car and I, I, and I haven't needed any more as I say it's a warm day behind the glass it's um it served its purpose well but that's really interesting as well so looking at my miles per kilowatt hour in my leaf I've never zeroed it so it's been just running the lifetime of the car and at the moment it's at 3.9 occasionally it drops into four um, in here on that motorway run, which as I say was pretty inefficient as far as EV driving is concerned, it's showing me an average, which I zeroed when I picked the car up, of 5.2 miles per kilowatt hour. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, it'll be interesting to see over the 24 hours if that remains up around that level, because if it does, that just shows you how efficient this car is. It seems like this car has no mobile connection in it. So where the Leaf does all its updates uh, over the air and it, um, it can find nearby charge stations, etc., etc. This one, if you ask it to do anything, like uh, find out the traffic or the weather, etc., it, um, it says no Wi-Fi connected. So live services are not accessible. Please connect to a Wi-Fi network. So we're all parked, we're at Ikea, and um, why would I go anywhere else for lunch when there's meatballs and free coffee on offer? Well, that's me refueled and um, spent up. You can't walk through that marketplace without buying stuff you never knew you needed. Anyway, that's sorted. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, 
drive back towards home and find somewhere to stop where I can basically just go through the cockpit in the car here and um, look at all the different features, look around the car and um, just generally have a, an all round kind of feel for what this car's like and what it's about. So I've arrived at a nice quiet spot that I thought would be ideal just to show you around this car sort of inside and out and it looks like it's about to start raining so I think we'll start with the outside. Notwithstanding the colour which I'll be honest personal preference isn't my favourite but uh, you know everybody likes something different. Um, the car itself I think looks quite nice. It, um, you can see where they've obviously tried to um, reduce drag and make it as efficient as possible. Uh, it's quite rounded you can see the back of it really does sort of allow the air to um, to roll off of it without um, creating too much drag. That is one issue though I must admit this kind of spoiler doesn't look much from the back here but I'll show you from inside in a bit. Um, it's like a bar right across your, your rear view mirror and makes it really difficult to see out the back. Uh, there's, I don't know if they're LED lights, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're interesting touches. They make it look nice. Uh, the other interesting feature for this full electric one at the front is, um, of course, there's no grill. And um, I think that just ties the front of the car up. That makes it look quite nice. Um, you've got your LED running lights as standard. Uh, it, on the whole, I think it's, it's a nice looking car. As with most modern cars, it's, um, it's all keyless. You have a key in your pocket. And I quite like these little touches. So you press to unlock, your wing mirror comes out. And when you get into the car, I think I mentioned it before, it, um, it remembers your seating position. So as soon as I shut the door, There you go, my seat goes back to where it remembers. So inside the car, it's priced to a point. This isn't a premium car. This isn't a £60,000 car. So you have to expect some compromises. Uh, but you look around, you know, those little kind of what looks like leather touches. I think the dashboard's quite nice. Um, you know, the buttons and everything seems to be quite logical. And I certainly, within a few minutes of getting in here, I was able to sort of navigate my way around quite nicely. Um, so. Well, we'll kind of we'll start over at this side so obviously you've got your presets for your seats you can set those on the driver's side we've got uh, auto wing mirrors coming in and out uh, and the usual array of um, windows passenger and driver are auto up auto down the, the rears aren't um, down here we've got uh, the lane assist uh, some of the usual bits and pieces you'd see um, that is your blind spot and this vest is um, it's the noise. It's the noise that the car generates when it's going at low speed and you can turn that on and off. Uh, and then you've got your um, opening and closing for your uh, recharging and your timers etc for that. Uh, when you start it up, you get a nice little tune as you do in most of these um, electric cars. And, um, and and it's a nice display. So basically on the left hand side we've got uh, these bars go up and down to tell you when you're putting your foot on the accelerator how much power you're using and if you're regening and how much um, nice digital speedo with um, you can obviously change how this all looks but um, it gives you an idea of how much range you've got and then um, sort of an information window and you can change that to lots of different things and you can look through it uh, lots and lots of different information and then on the far right, you've got your uh, battery charge. On the steering wheel, um, pretty standard cruise control, uh, setting up the adaptive cruise control, uh, and, and then the controls for your phone, radio, etc. Uh, this one has got DAB in it, and it seems to work quite well. Not all of them do around here. On the um, main screen itself, so the EV button brings up your kind of your details about uh, your, your battery and how efficiently you're driving. And... Um, you know, if you can go into these different things and see how quickly it's going to be to charge. So 24 minutes on a rapid, uh, 3 hours and 15 on a 7 kilowatt charger and on a granny charger 10 hours 50. And we've got 33% battery left and 33 miles. So there's lots and lots of information on here. Plus you've got all your normal um, connections. You've got Apple CarPlay, you've got um, your DAB radio, FM, AM, all the bits and pieces that you would normally expect uh, and your sat nav, which... Um, I have to say worked quite well taking me to Southampton. Climate control, uh, all the usual bits and pieces that you would expect in, in a car uh, like this. And um, two powers plus a USB and an uh, auxiliary. And also under this armrest, uh, if you can see it in the light, there's another USB. So uh, plenty 
uh, of connectivity and plenty of places to charge your phone. The, um, there's no gear stick as such. So what you've got here is a kind of a hand rest and a uh, drive, reverse and park. And you've got neutral in the middle. And uh, in addition to that, you've got uh, the different drive modes. You've got heated seats in the front and you've got, uh, this is a nice touch, I think, air conditioned seats. It's lovely. It blows nice cool air at your bottom. <laughs> um, Heated steering wheel, auto handbrake, um, that's your parking sensors, the noise on and off, and an electronic handbrake. The door cards, I think, this is where they've started to save a little bit of money. They just look a little bit cheap, a little bit dated. Um, nothing fundamentally wrong with them, but um, they're not the best. Uh, you can probably, I don't know if you can see again in the light, uh, the speakers and the sound system are branded with Infinity. Uh, it's okay. Um, my... I drive a Techno Leaf. The Bose system in that is by far superior. I have to say it's much, much better than this one. Um, there's nothing wrong with it and it sounds absolutely fine. But if I was to do a like for like comparison, uh, the Bose is definitely wins um, hands down. In the back, and I'm sure the kids will give us a better idea later, but you can see their seats are in there. Uh, there's ample room. There's um, obviously the uh, climate comes into the back there through those vents. Uh, there's some sort of cup holders. Uh, a little armrest with cup holders in. Uh, just, you know, it, for a car of this size, it's roomy enough in the back for probably two adults, three at a real push. So the boot is a good size, I have to say. Uh, one thing I have noticed is it's, it's quite, I say quite shallow. It's shallow in comparison to if you bought uh, an ice version in this car. Basically, the battery is underneath. So you get... You get some storage in there, you get some bits and pieces, there's no spare wheel, but um, it's a little bit shallower than it would otherwise be. Oh! Oh! Epic! Air freshener! Air freshener in the back! <laughs> oh, Daddy? Yes? Are we all in? You get, you get to go high percent warm. Oh, you've got heated seats in the back. You got your own individual heated seats? Yes. Yeah, I want to get one of these. Oh wow. Is that it? Are you sold now because you get your own heated seat? Yeah, heated seat, own heated seat, no argument about it. <laughs> we want this car! <laughs> it feels a bit cheap inside. Do you think? Yeah. I prefer ours, I prefer the leaf. So that's interesting. See, I I thought that this felt a bit more modern, but okay. with like the door cards feel really this looks cheap, rubbish. I think. I oh, see, I didn't mind all this. This is top of the range, is it? Yeah. Okay. It looks big when I drove home, you know, when I got in. Right, I'll put the leaf next to it. They're exactly the same size. The leaf is taller. Right. But lengthwise, so they look so almost the, identical. The leaf's stocky then. Well, after a long day out and about driving, I'm home now. Uh, we've just been into town and back, which meant another, what, 20, 25 mile round trip, dual carriageways and A-roads. Uh, um, interestingly enough, 13% and the low battery warning sign came on. Plugged into the wall here, remember I'm a seven kilowatt charger uh, and it's saying 13%, four hours to charge. So um, as far as I'm concerned, that's really, really good. Good morning, uh, car's been on charge all night. It's the day we've got to give it back today. But first of all, we are heading to do some keep fit at the gym, aren't we? Yes. Right, so charge overnight, just having a look. Uh, we are up to, well, I set off 119 miles. So that's at 100% battery. So based on my driving from yesterday and certainly the latter part of yesterday, which is pretty normal for my everyday driving, um, I can expect this car to do 120 miles as a, a normal everyday driving experience uh, with the battery at 100%. Well, there we go. I'm home now. Um, I'm back in my own leaf and I have to say it's really nice to be back in here. So kind of good and bad points. I'll start with the bad points because there's not many, I'll be honest. Um, one of the big things I noticed was that spoiler at the back that obviously helps with airflow. It, um, it just puts a massive blind spot in your rear view mirror. Um, and when it rains, it kind of you can't see anything out the back. So that's one negative. The other is the charge port. Uh, I like on this leaf the way that the um, the cover just flips open and closed on the charger itself. On there, it was like a pull out plug. It ended up hanging down. It looked like there's a place to put it, but it was all a bit fiddly. And um, it, ultimately it was just banging against the paintwork. I didn't like that. And the final thing that I wasn't overly keen on was um, the fact that it doesn't have um, like 
connectivity and an app that goes with it. You need to hotspot your phone in order to get the connection with the um, infotainment system in, in the car. Uh, and there is no app to kind of remotely turn on the um, heating or check the charging or anything like that. So they were kind of my negative things. On the positive, I have to say it is definitely a step forward from the Leaf as an all round package. Uh, it drove really nicely. It was very quiet, very smooth as you would expect. Uh, the efficiency and the mileage you get from that battery, I think were very, very good. Now I know I had the top of the range one, but the gadgets and the um, the additional features that it had in it were far superior to this Leaf. Uh, the adaptive cruise control, the lane assist, lovely features that I would really like in a car. And um, you know, certainly going forward, whether I opt for the Ionic or wait for the new Leaf, that's definitely features that I will be looking to make sure I have in the car because it just makes the drive so much more relaxing. Now, if I didn't have an EV and I was in the market for my first EV, uh, which one would I choose? I would definitely choose the Ionic. It definitely stands head and shoulders above the current Leaf, as in the 2017 Leaf. In conclusion, a lovely car, definitely a car worth looking at if you're in the market for an EV. And I would suggest if you don't already own an EV and you want this to be your first experience, then this is definitely the car to start with. I've thoroughly enjoyed the last 24 hours with the Ionic. It's a shame it didn't work out for me personally, but um, hopefully it's given you a bit of an insight whether that might work for you or not. And um, you know, as I said, I will probably mention a bit more about it and a bit more about the kind of the costs and um, you know things that are prevalent to today uh, on my next few vlogs. Uh, if you haven't seen those before, then um, if you subscribe to the channel you'll keep up to date with them uh, and if you've enjoyed this video please remember to like and share it and for now um, thanks ever so much for watching I'll see you soon take care oh.